While the epidemic of gun violence in this country remains relentless, an ABC News gun violence archive analysis of crime data does show some hints of progress. After two years of dramatic increases in shootings, homicides are down nearly 5% in our nation's 50 biggest cities, and New York and Chicago are seeing double-digit decreases. ABC News Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas went to the Windy City for an exclusive conversation with the police superintendent as part of ABC's continuing coverage of guns in America. Chicago is no stranger to the sound of gunfire. The last few weekends particularly bloody, not even children spared from being shot or killed. In one case, likely gang-related, nine people shot, two killed. In another, a 10-year-old boy wounded while walking with his dad. We have, have had our challenges these past several days. For Chicago police, it's a fight of life and death. But there are green shoots of hope. Shootings in the city are down 20% through the end of summer. Homicides falling 16%. That's 101 fewer people killed this year compared to last year. Yet there have still been more than 2,100 shootings this year and 513 homicides. It's the most complex policing landscape ever in this country's history. Um, we are making progress, but the complexities uh, make it such that it's so fragile. I spent the day with Chicago Everywhere Police go, Superintendent David Brown, <laughs> where we had a raw, honest conversation about what's working and what's not in his fight against gun violence. At the core of the city's violence is gang activity and drug dealing, and an increasing willingness to pull the trigger among all Chicagoans. Or road rage, more domestic gender-based violence, social, social media-driven media violence, it, but the, the, the bottom line is the inability to resolve personal conflicts. And it escalates to, now I want to kill you. It's now routine to find 40 bullet casings at a single shooting. Is there any particular incident in the last couple years or recently that sort of sticks in your mind? It's children. It, it is the impact that gun violence is having on children. There's yeah. one particular case where a baby, seven-year-olds with their dad at a McDonald's drive through and uh, the person who has been trying to uh, shoot and kill this other person because of a gang conflict just shoots up the car, riddled with bullets, and this young baby dies. With such wrenching violence, the city has been deploying new tactics, seeing declines after more surgically deploying officers. If you're able to find that hornet's nest and focus your resources on those small gun violence geographic areas, we've seen significant declines. I sense with you that this really is a dynamic battle, if you will. It it's not, it, no one's declaring victory here, no, even, as you, even as you make progress. You know, we're making progress, but we are not uh, in any way, shape, or form uh, satisfied. And police have taken, on average, 12,000 guns a year off the street. Historic numbers. I don't think we're even chipping away at a, a large percentage of the illegal guns in, in, in this community. The superintendent said what is working to bring down shootings is officers aggressively responding to shots fired. You'll see case after case after case of officers running toward danger, running toward gunfire, risking um, their lives. 150 the last two and a half years, officers shot at and shot. Collaboration is also working. More cooperative programs with social services and housing. And police are using more technology. Watch closely. This man dressed in black riding a bicycle randomly shoots this woman in the back. The special team of investigators goes out with the homicide detectives, hunting for camera footage from homes and businesses. And they actually try to follow these individuals prior to the incident and post the incident. Cameras giving a clear-cut vision of the suspect at a bicycle shop he visited earlier that day. And then we go there and you get that money shot. They track him through the city. Almost six hours after the incident, boom, he just ran past the officer. Then a shootout with police. <laughs> wounding an officer. The sound caught on sensors planted throughout the city so police can monitor for gunfire. But as they push shootings down overall, robberies and motor vehicle theft have spiked dramatically. And Superintendent Brown is willing to have the uncomfortable conversation. Many of the victims and suspects, often men of color. The demographics are what they are in terms of people that look like you and me. 
who are shooters and are victims. How, as a black man, and as a law enforcement executive, do you balance how you feel about that? I think the first step for me personally is to never forget where I've come from. For Brown, it's personal. On Father's Day in 2010, his own son killing a stranger and a responding officer during an apparent mental breakdown before being killed by police in a suburb of Dallas, where Brown previously served as chief. It's easy for me to see the pain, feel the pain, uh, not from a distance. I'm, I'm really sensing, I know how that parent feels. Because you've been through it. I have. I know how that feels. And I know how it feels when people, maybe outside the community, blame the parents for what's happening in the community. Brown says he spends a lot of time in community outreach, trying to build trust after George Floyd. George Floyd being murdered on videotape by Officer Chauvin revealed the people we should have never hired on our, on our, in our police departments. So how did you try to build the community trust, and how difficult has it been? Made it more difficult to even be heard. So we had a recent community meeting in an area who's seen a 41% reduction in homicides. And they were upset at police for not doing their job. And I wanted to really talk about, man, how, how can you be upset? And I, then I, I thought to myself, listen more than you talk. So, you know, we gave opportunity for the communities to, to talk about what they were upset with us about. Brown taking the community's complaints about low-level crime back to his team for action. Can we get that done today? Get some training done? Reach out to the captain, second district. Brown believes in aggressively arresting and prosecuting the small core of shooters and killers who terrorize poor communities. He does not believe in mass incarceration and stop and frisk. If I wear uh, some blue jeans and a T-shirt and walk outside this building, I'll get stopped more than once. But Brown says having sustained success against crime will also require a broad economic plan. Our impoverished communities in Chicago here, we just did not have the commitment. He's hoping the city's more than billion dollar investment will lead to long-term crime reduction. You can't place yourself out of poverty. Police okay. transformed this one-time drug corner into a basketball court and green space for sports and arts. So we're trying to create as many interactions with young people outside of the criminal justice system. We, we want to engage them before crisis happen and know them and them know us. People who have hope can have dreams of a better life. People who have dreams of a better life are, are, not, are not attracted to violence. Hope key in so many of these scenarios. Pierre Thomas, kind enough to join us in studio. Pleasure. So great to have you here, Thank Pierre. You. Uh, so obviously, we're talking about progress, but the numbers of the shootings, the crime, still high. Well, no one's declaring victory, for sure. Uh, there is progress in the city of Chicago. Uh, shootings down 20 percent, uh, homicides down about 16 percent. But when you look at those numbers in context, there were still 2,100 shootings so far through the end of the summer, more than 500 homicides. So while they're making significant progress, it's still what I call a chronic epidemic. Mm -hmm. uh, but. To be certain, the fact that they've had 100 fewer homicides in the city of Chicago this year and 500 fewer shootings is good news. And you've obviously covered this across the country, various cities. Are you seeing evidence that the cities are, are using a common strategy and communicating with each other to try to reduce crime overall? You know, one of the things that uh, Superintendent Brown mentioned is that he is trying to constantly get information from other cities to see what's working, uh, to see what trends they're seeing, to apply to what he's experiencing in Chicago. So I do get the sense from law enforcement officials around the country that they are communicating and trying to figure out what's working and what's not. A glimmer of good news that you're bringing us and just so good to see you here Pleasure. with us in the studio. Thank you. Pierre Thomas, thanks so much. Pleasure. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.